Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today, I will be reviewing episode two of the Netflix original sci-fi miniseries, Altered Carbon. But before I get into my review, if you like the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notification. And if you haven't seen this, this miniseries or aren't caught up, consider this your spoiler warning. Now, on to the review. So the name of this episode is called Fallen Angel. And the first shot you see is of a dad and son fishing and you see the city in the background. And then you see this body falling from the sky. I thought that was kind of cheesy to name it and that was your first scene, but I got past it. Um, so at the end of episode one, we know that our, that our vigilante, our rebel, our prisoner that has been on ice for 250 years, takes a job to find out the murder or the murderer of one of the elites, someone that is, you know, ridiculously wealthy. At the end of episode one, there was that whole hotel scene that reminded me of John Wick. So we enter there and he's having like a dream flashing back to one of his many lives because apparently he's died over and over again. So he's had what they call sleeves in this show. And he's been in at least two other ones before what he's actually remem remembering. And, but he's still, again, like I said, you have those memories. And we find out later on in the episode that if you do this too much, you could go crazy, obviously, because you're just jumping real, you know, from sleeve, from body to body to body. Depending on what kind of life you live, it could drive you crazy as opposed to the elites that can afford having a clone of how they look. So in case something happens, they're really just going back into their own bodies, not anyone else. So that seems to, at least from what the show tells us, it makes people a little bit not go crazy when you're doing it that way, but only the rich and only, cause it's really expensive to do that procedure. Follow up and he's waking up, bad dream, boom. A lot of talking, a lot of, you know, obviously they're getting, we're getting to know these characters. There is police in this world, but you know, the, the female that is the police officer, she's Hispanic. She's really aggressive. And I do enjoy her acting, the actual actress. Some of the stuff, some of it is a little, uh, some scenes are a little overacting, but in a sci-fi movie, you give that a pass because that sometimes in these sci-fis, you have to do things in a fantastical way, especially with a show like this, where the whole thing is very fantastical. You have to take yourself out of it, uh, out of reality and just accept what you're seeing. Even the premise of it, the fact that there's the disparity between the really rich and the really poor is so wide and I get it. It's, it's emulating real life. Like what we're doing now in 2021, there is that dis disparity between the haves and the have nots. It's just a little bit overblown in this miniseries. Same thing with the sexualizing of, of certain events, the whole world, like when you go to the rich people, it's classy, it's having dinners and all that stuff. But when you go to the poor, it's all about drugs and sex and, and the sexuality of, of the, of the thing is right in your face. Like some of our main characters are brawless. You can see nipples, you know, the, in the first two episodes you see, I mean, they're beautiful women, but apparently they, they, you know, the director, the producer likes putting them in underwear and we, we, we got that not as much as we did in the first one, but we definitely got close to in this one when we caught up with our Hispanic police officer and she was in her bed in some underwear and the shots and everything. So the, the producers and the directors are trying to add some kind of sexuality. But again, it seems like overdone. It seems like it's forced. Uh, upon us just to kind of grab some some kind of viewers. I don't know if the book is that sexualized, 
but it seems like they're trying to be HBO in Netflix. And I get there's very adult material on Netflix, but for this show, it didn't flow with the story like a Game of Thrones when the nudity comes in. And I'm not giving Game of Thrones a pass either because some of that sexual sexual scenes or sex scenes were forced upon us because they know their viewership. But this show hasn't even earned that, at least with some, some people, uh, the way Game of Thrones was, they just give it to you and either you take it or you don't. So when I saw that, I mean, I could believe it because again, I have to detach myself, but it's overdone. All in all, I enjoyed the episode. It wasn't, it wasn't too, too fast paced. It was kind of boring because there was a lot of, of getting to know the characters. I mean, it's, it's season, it's episode two of season one. You just can't go into like this, all this heavy storyline when you don't even know the characters have gone, have grown some kind of of attachment to these characters i felt the acting on all parts was a little off on this it was kind of off on the first one but i still enjoyed it like i like i've been saying i tend to detach myself but it was a lot more noticeable especially from the main characters which is a problem if you can't if you can't hold consistency between what i saw on in episode one and episode two so i'm hoping by the time i get to episode three there's gonna be at least a consistency maybe it's the story maybe it's the writing maybe it's the director i don't know but there's definitely difference in acting from what i saw in episode one to what i saw now in episode two and i'm still can't understand how he is so familiar with this technology but when we see him in this one he's he's interacting with databases and cross matching and stuff and but i'm like what how how that, that i kept on t saying every time he used some technology i'm like how does he know i mean technology from 2010 to 2020 is so different now you're adding 250 years and that part is so bothersome for me and again maybe towards the middle or the end it gets revealed that he's just like a super genius because apparently he has also powers i don't know if he has them in this one even though he seems to see things in his mind so maybe he is some kind of ai robot because in, in uh, episode one we see him looking through the walls and even his girl that he had he goes oh now you can see through the wall and in this episode two, he does the same thing. He kind of he kind of sees things before they happen. So it's leading me maybe to believe that he is a little bit more uh, intuitive that than what I'm giving him credit for. So the show goes out of his way, out of its way to make the rich people douchey. To basically, they can do no wrong. They take whatever they want. They basically are the law, even though there are police officers there. And, and I get it. Like I said, it's mimicking what we're going through in real life and just adding a little bit more, you know, raising up the volume to to 10. And I, again, I could appreciate that from a sci fi. That's what you want from a sci fi. It has to be fantastical. And I do like the costumes. I like the, the mercenaries or cops, the way their, 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 their aesthetic is. I could definitely uh, appreciate that. And some of the shots that I saw in this in this episode especially when he puts on when he you know he's looking for the before i get ahead of myself he's looking for this rich man's uh, killer he, he he narrows it down to this ex-military person so he goes and finds him when he finds him he there's like this you know dialogue between them when he finds out that yeah he didn't he wasn't the, he wasn't the trigger man he wasn't the one that that killed our our trillionaire if you will uh he definitely had motive because apparently he was dating the rich guy was dating his daughter in this process he finds that there he has this uh, 
I, I want to call it, I'm going to say apparatus, but like the setup where he has what appears like his daughter's vertebrae because, uh, you know, if she was murdered. Then we find out, you know, when our main guy, I don't want to call him a hero because I don't know if he is a hero, if he isn't a hero. But for all intents, for all intensive purposes, he's just the lead actor in this uh, in this miniseries. Uh, he goes into he, he puts this apparatus in his head and he goes into his daughter's, you know, magic vertebrae. And that shot right there was very, very well done. Very beautiful. I like the pulsating, you know, lights, the whole change in atmosphere. So that was really, really beautiful. And that's what we like to see in our sci fi, something that we are not going to see in any other show and i could appreciate that one shot obviously he goes in there he finds out that hey why are you why are you being a creep and having your daughter just stuck in this loop and i and i definitely could feel his pain and and anguish in having to lose his daughter and just having her in this ai state in a in a, in a loop and, and and it's not a, a nice loop it's definitely it's her like drugged up she's in the gutter somewhere so it's not like a nice loop that she's stuck in but yet she's stuck in so our hero or our main guy kind of takes a side quest or if you're familiar with video games and especially like gta you have your main goal but you have all these little side missions that side quests and side storylines and we that we he that's what he does in this instance he takes this little side uh, detour he, our main dude is in like a complete a-ho and vigilante it seems like he does have a heart he does have a little bit of a oh i want to help spirit and the first episode let us know that a little bit he's obviously fighting against billionaires or people with money to be able to use carcasses like this like no regard and the poor don't get that option so he definitely has this I guess the show's trying to give him like a Robin Hood feel to it, it, you know, with bodies like he doesn't, you know, approve of what is going on and he's set on bringing down the system. So he goes on this quest to to try to get some answers for this man and we find out again he goes into this I guess it's a brothel, but it has, it's the weirdest thing to see. And like I, I said it earlier, just the sexualization in this, in this mini series is so high up there. I don't mind it. I mean, it is what it is, but it takes me out of the story. I can't follow through because then I was like, oh, that was graphic or, oh, that that's a guy's junk just walking out like in my screen. So if you're not familiar with shows like these and that's the hey this is what we're going to present to you even a little bit to guides like bam right in your face 100 miles an hour you're going to get used to it or not and i can see how that could turn people off as far as like being able to enjoy enjoy a product like you know altered carbon but all in all enjoyable for episode two you have to expect it's going to be fairly boring and this one was for the most part, you're trying to get to know what motives are, who's the good one, who's the bad one, who might be a little bit, you know, mischievous and stuff like that. So, but still, I'm still interested in following it through and seeing it towards the end. So I was entertained. I could do without all that nudity part of it. I think if you took that off and put more storyline, it would have flowed more quicker. And maybe add all this nudity little by little the third fourth fifth you know uh episode and then kind of ramp it up to what you feel comfortable i get it that society today is hyper sexualized but i don't think a lot of us want that in our at least to that extent in our in our tv series i think what game of thrones did was probably the top you know sometimes it got a little bit creepy but they they seem to manage it correctly to where i mean look look at how many awards they got so anyways if you have some time if you have like 58 minutes to kill and you want to check out a let me know what you guys think if, you, if you've seen episode two am i missing something i want to kind of give you guys a genuine off the top i i watch it and i review it and see what sticks because that's how you know that you have 
a show on your hand when you could sit there and talk and talk and describe and characters you start remembering so leave your remarks in the comment let me know what you guys think and like always that's a wrap